This is my first stab at one of these types of videos, so hopefully you find it interesting and informative. I'm going to talk about how the two types of tyre pressure monitoring system, or TPMS for short, work. TPMS has been a legal requirement as part of general safety regulations for all new cars sold in the EU, including the UK, since November 2014, for all new models brought to market, or types as it's officially known, from November 2012. Obviously many cars have had this feature before and including my own 2003 Valsatis and my 2005 Citroen C4. So underinflated tyres are considered a safety and an environmental issue as they can cause a lack of vehicle control that could lead to accidents but also causes higher fuel consumption which leads to higher emissions. The idea of TPMS is to notify the driver of an underinflated tyre with a warning similar to this so that the driver knows they need to be careful and to get the issue resolved quickly. Now there are two types of TPMS known as direct and indirect. They both work very differently and knowing how they work may in some way benefit your life, otherwise you wouldn't have listened for this long. I'm going to start with direct as it's the easiest to explain but also the one most people likely think of when they hear TPMS. So direct TPMS uses sensors fitted inside the tyre, normally on the opposite side of the valve. The sensor can determine tyre pressure and send this wirelessly periodically to the vehicle which compares it against the programmed tyre pressures. If any of the tyres are below the programme thresholds, then a warning is shown. You would normally know if you had direct TPMS, as you would have a display similar to my Velsatis, which shows you the individual tyre pressures. This is what my Velsatis does if it picks up a low tyre pressure. Warning, rear right tyre, check the pressure. Now those sensors have batteries in, so if your TPMS doesn't work, it could be that the batteries are dead. I think the battery life is typically about 10 years. A tyre fitter might be able to replace the sensor or the battery for you. Additionally, those sensors are programmed to the car, so if you swap your wheels around, the wheel that shows up on the display will be in the wrong place. Again, it might be something that a dealer or a specialist might be able to program for you. Indirect is much less sophisticated, but a rather clever way of determining if a tyre has lost pressure. So instead of specific sensors, the TPMS uses the existing wheel speed sensors as fitted for the anti-lock braking system, or ABS. When a tyre deflates, its rolling radius reduces, shown here with the orange arrow, this makes the wheel effectively smaller and hence it needs to rotate faster compared to the other wheels to maintain the same vehicle speed. The car compares this wheel speed versus the other wheels and deduces the tyre must have lost pressure because it's rotating faster. The system will then give you a warning to tell you to check your tyre pressures. It's unlikely to tell you which tyre to check and it can't tell you the exact tyre pressure but it's done its job in telling you something is up. I imagine it only really works if you have a tyre notably down on pressure like a puncture all the tyres have lost pressure over time then it's unlikely to pick this up as there won't be so much difference in the individual wheel speeds. I think you also need to be moving for it to know it has an issue where direct TPMS might tell you as soon as you get in your car if your tyres are deflated overnight. As the car doesn't know the pressures when you do inflate the tyre pressures to the correct level you normally have to let it know either through some sort of set or stall button similar to what's on this display here on this Golf SV. So if you've ever wondered what that mystery button is on the console, it could be that. So a quick summary, direct is the superior system. It tells you the exact power pressures for each wheel in real time. You can see it if you have a gradual or sudden loss of tire pressure. So it's very useful. The only issue is that over time it will need maintenance through battery replacement or sensor change. As you can imagine, many people don't do this on used cars. Although I understand if you've got a warning light now on your dash saying your TPMS isn't working, that could be an MOT fail. Indirect, meanwhile, is a simpler, cheaper and lighter solution that requires no maintenance, but it's a lot less useful. It can only tell you that something's up. It can't tell you individual tyre pressures. You can't keep an eye on your tyre pressures in real time. So remember to keep an eye out for your tyre pressures, regardless of whether you've got TPMS on what system you might have. Let me know your thoughts on this video and if I should make more videos in this style. I'll try not to make the next one look so much like a high school presentation, but either way, thank you for watching.